Welcome to this week's episode of TLA. Welcome to my channel if you are new. My name is Keith Nguyen and I'm a kayak angler, vlogger, and blogger in California. On this episode, we go out kayak fishing and crabbing in Half Moon Bay and I will cover three common misconceptions about crabbing that if you discard, would definitely help you improve your accounts. Let's get started. Hey guys, welcome to this episode of TLA. On this episode, I'm heading back to Half Moon Bay in order to get um, some, a little bit more crabs. But the topic of this week on this episode is misconceptions about crabbing. Um, this is some hard earned experience so that, you know, if you want to improve your crabbing, you can follow this particular episode. Hopefully you can use this advice and, you know, improve your ability to catch crab and, um, you know, get, in, get on it while the, get, the getting is good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get ready. I'll catch you guys out there. So let's go over some of the general misconceptions that people have regarding crabbing. So in this way, I think these misconceptions and, you know, call them Chovy superstitions, call them whatever they want to call them. But, you know, I've, I've dealt with these guys for a very long time. And the ge one general misconception, so misconception one about crabbing is that longer soaks produce more crab. Let's just debunk that all together. Longer soaks don't always equate to more crabs, okay? I thought that some of the guys say, I left it for two hours, I left it for three hours, and it came back and there was like, like a few small dungies and like a rock crab and something like that. So, you know, you want to maximize your time on the water. You want to maximize the, 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 the crab you're going to get when you're on the water, right? And so that means, you know, you have to really find the most productive spots that produces crab because I'll tell you right now, a three hour soak in an area that holds no crab will get you no crab. A 20 minute soak, a 15 minute soak, a 30 minute soak, 45 minute soak in an area that produces crab will possibly just limit you out quickly. So that's the first misconception and I'm gonna tell you guys straight out now, if you guys are learning about crabbing and learning about how to get these guys is find the productive spot. It's not about soaking for long periods of time. Number one. All right, guys. Want a filthy? Made a few runs already. Oh. Oh yeah, filthy for sure. Made a few runs, trying to get him out of the, the kelp bed. He liked it. He liked that smell. Filthy. Nothing to sneeze about. Thank <laughs> you. 
half, half that half, here, well, okay. either side didn't cut, 23, 22, 23, Good. okay, so the second misconception people tend to have is that they believe, you know, pull out some old bait that's been in the freezer for months and months and months on end, frozen burn and everything, and you know, that will catch you crab, right? And so my general misconception around that, the general misconception around that is that, you know, that's not really putting you in the best position to get crabs because you gotta think crabs are like any living being, you know? If they were to choose between a fresh piece of meat that's, that's been in the water versus something that's really old and kind of, um, you know, decrepitated and it's just rotten, right? Um, they're gonna choose the fresh stuff. Believe me, they will. It's, uh, the fresh stuff has a nicer smell to it, has, you know, has that smell like, hey, you know, I'm, you know, it's, 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 it's food versus something that has been rotting around for a while now. So rotting smell doesn't necessarily equate to kidding poor crabs, in fact, the crabs don't even like at that as much you know they they want some fresh bait they want something that will that will entice them to come in there and start eating right so you gotta think of, of crabs just like human beings it's like they want to eat the good stuff just like you want to eat the good stuff so using uh fresh bait is always the best scenario versus just using some some old bait that you know um has been laying in the freezer for for a long long period of time and then trying to trying to use it as bait you know if you if that's all you got then obviously you know use it they're scavengers but um, in my personal opinion, I would use fresh bait as much as I can. So that's the second misconception is that uh, rotting bait would just get you crab. Yes and no. I want to fish, but I don't think it knows it's been hooked. Oh, it figured out it's hooked. It's hooked. <sighs> Filthy uh, as it gets. Right there. Uh, nice. Filthy link. I got to something filthy, guys. Another one. Don't take long to get to these guys. They're filthy as they come. There you go. That's how they like to do it. Perfect size, man. Perfect size. Perfect eating size. I don't want them too big. Get kind of nasty after that, right, guys? Yeah. it there. Ah. Guys, think nice, eatable link cut. So the last piece of advice, or maybe a misconception that people have, is that rock crab and Dungeness crab don't actually exist in the same area. Dungeness crab and crab and rock crab don't exist in the same area. Rock crabs are called rock crabs because they like to be near structures. They like to be near rocks. So if you are getting a lot of rock crab, that pretty much means you're not getting gonna get very many Dungeness crab. So, but if your target is rock crab, 
then by all means, drop all your pots there and go get rock crabs. Rock crabs are actually really good for using them as, as a base for a soup because they're so sweet. But Dungeness crab is where the meat's going to be at. So um, if you are getting rock crab, move. Go find a sandy spot and get on the fish. So my action camera died, but here's a prime example of what I was alluding to on the last point. My first set of pots produced actually mainly a lot of rock crab. So I moved them, so I moved them before the turn of the tide and loaded up on a bunch of Dungeness crab and I got actually a good amount of crab for the rest of the day. All right, guys, so we are back on land. Um, my GoPro died on me, so I have to use my phone to kind of film the rest of this outgoing segment here. But they started getting, they started to go on, on the, 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 tide, the tide swing, which is something, you know, if you are going to go for crabs, I mean, you really want to just focus on those tide swings and making sure that you're in the right position. So uh, when I went early on, I didn't get on the position correctly. I got a bunch of rock crabs. And so I had to move, and then when I moved and I, I, I kind of stayed on the depth that they were kind of at, that's when I was able to hit up those uh, those Dungeness crab, which I was able to get like seven of them. I didn't completely stay, paid attention to just fishing for Dungeness crab because I went for 30 lings as well. So that's the kind of trade off I had to do. So, but we were able to pull two beautiful uh, nasty lings, uh, two really, we were able to pull two filthy lings and then uh, seven seven Dungeness crabs and a few uh, rock crabs as well so um, I really like the rock crabs from Udons okay so anyways that was a great day so if so I hope you guys also got a little something away from the tips that I gave you guys earlier and that will help you to to fish a little bit better for yourself okay if you enjoy these content make sure to like share and subscribe and I'll catch you next time on another episode of TLA if you want to know more about kayak fishing, you can always visit my website at www.thelosanchovy.com where I have numerous tutorials, videos, and resources to help you get started. Visit our store in beautiful Redwood City where we have everything you need to get started. Our helpful staff will get you situated and answer any questions you may have. If you are in the East Bay, come check out our brand new store in beautiful Brooklyn Basin. From SUPs to PFDs, our shop has everything you need and our friendly staff will get you situated and in the water in no time.